So then while the ANC's leadership and party faithful are expected to continue descending on Pumalanga for this week to mark 112 years of its formation, the Secretary General, Figile Mbalula, as you heard in Lucanio's report there, sparked quite a bit of controversy over the weekend when he basically admitted that the party lied in its defense of former President Jacob Zuma's Nkandla fire pool project. You remember government was heavily criticized for the spending on non-security upgrades at the former head of state's uh, estate or homestead in Guazul Natal. Well, Mbalula yesterday said basically that former President Zuma had gone too far with his latest antics. Take this further now with political analyst Professor Susan Boyson. Professor, very good evening to you. Good to have your time tonight. So, a lot of outrage uh, at the comments made by Figile Mbalula basically admitting that members of the ANC, even in explanations made by its deployees to cabinet who described that swimming pool as a fire pool during the controversy around the Ganda non-security upgrades were not truthful but defending their leader at any cost to paraphrase have caused as I was saying all of this outrage but have they revealed anything that we didn't already know about the ANC and its posture when it comes to how far it will go to protect its own? Yes indeed Emekile you fit it right on the, on the head uh, it is nothing, there is nothing in what Fikile Mbalula said that we did not already know. The ANC for years and close to for a full decade by now has been going through a spectacle of attempted delusion by pretending that they buy into the possibility that this is a fire pool, a security feature, whereas absolutely I don't think there is one person in South Africa who really believed that that is a fire pool security feature and not a swimming pool. So this is an attempt to a bizarre, bizarre act of extended delusion and South Africans have not believed it and so there's really no, not much point I believe it's almost insult to people's intelligence for a person high up in ANC at this stage to come and say and to make a revelation and say this is what we do did for a leader. This is where the ANC needs to look at itself and make sure it doesn't completely con repeat that kind of mistake of continuously covering up for leaders. Because current leaders, Cyril Ramaphosa included, are suffering from that lack of credibility that has been created through this attempted delusion by the ANC as, in terms of security features. And yes, ANC has continuously been paying the price. It has been paying price, you can see, in the sense that it has been losing credibility, it has been losing support, and that is a huge price to pay. And the peak of this price will probably be coming right now at a time when ANC really needs citizens and voters in a run up to this year's election right. to believe that in Sir Ramposa's words today, the ANC is at a moment of brief head and faster progress as possible in future. And if this is a party that creates such extensive nets of delusion, misinformation, in a way, the ANC has got a long way to prove that it has credibility in the utterances it is making, also about policy and governance. On the issue of credibility, how different is the ANC in 2024 to the ANC that defended its former president Jacob Zuma in the midst of that Nganza controversy, even when the public protector had very clearly laid out that those were non-security upgrades in the main and that there should have been accountability, yet they continued, in fact, with some of the leadership attacking Professor Tulima Donzella at the time. And since Mbalula's comments in the last 24 to 48 hours, some are saying we're seeing similar posturing from the party in the blistering defense of its president this time round to do with Palapala. Pala. Yes, that, that, is in, that indeed comes to mind, because again, there was a turn in Parliament. Of course, we know about the recommendation from high-level judges that there should be an investigation, and Parliament 
I had about a year, just over a year ago, I had defeated that motion and Sir Ron Posa could, was free to stand for re-election as president, whereas ideally that there should have been an investigation in depth and a truthful investigation by credible people to show definitively Perhaps there was nothing to account for, but the way the ANC had handled it in the run up to the, the last set of Nazarek party elections has not been the best way if one thinks about this great need to create credibility. Mm -hmm. So there has been a sense of repeat of that type of error, although we must always add that the extent of the attempted delusion and the bizarre direct lies actually that were put forward in the case of Jacob Zuma, those have not been repeated, but the gray areas around Palapala are very, very evident. And the, the credibility issues also extend into policies where the ANC wants us to believe at this point that there is a bit that there are rays of hope that citizens, voters would do well by continuing their belief that the ANC is a party to take South Africa forward. And so this is a time that we also need the ANC to be able to create that credibility in a broader sense. But they have their work cut out for them and it will be a very tough task. But is the party, Professor Boyson, just slow to learn lessons or incapable of profound change for the better? That is such a difficult one to answer because we know the, so much of the deficits, shortcomings are in domain of leadership. And, but faults and all, the current leadership that the ANC has is probably the best leadership the party has available to itself to represent it and so in that way it is just not capable of doing better but indeed the we, this also probably the case that they do not want to learn the lesson because if they want to learn the lesson they would have to expose themselves and that kind of exposure may deliver some truths that are harder to explain than attempted reinterpretation of policies, attempted reassurances to South Africans that this is indeed a party that is still in a process of renewing itself, even if the promise of five years ago has not given definitive proof to that effect so far. Does learning the lessons in its truest form does that lie in significant electoral decline this year or potentially even um, a loss, if you will, of the handle on government, as some are suggesting for the first time in 30 years, may be possible where the ANC is concerned? We already see the learning of this lesson in the fact that this is an ANC now at those 112 years, but an ANC that cannot ensure that the voters will buy into its message at this stage. An ANC for the first time in its, election, in its existence through elections that do now runs the risk of losing an outright majority. And if that is not a point of profound truth for a party they, where it must show that it can really learn the lessons and it can do better, then there is probably no rescuing of a party to the two to bring to the table. And the ANC so far is not showing that it has really been learning those lessons because it is not significantly persuasive so far. And we, but we, and we have seen the election campaign already taking quite a bit of rollout. But so far, I believe the persuasion has not been there. That it really has to put a lot of faith in the possibility that voters will just continue believing and continue believing that this is the strongest party, the best party that can possibly make a difference to voters' lives, because if voters believe that, then the party will have a chance. 
and there is a chance that those voters can still think that about the ANC, but it is certainly with a big pinch of salt, handful of salt, that they will be doing that. Professor Susan Boyston, always good to speak to you. Thank you for your time tonight.